Over our lifetimes, different crises can affect us or people around us. They can be natural disasters like floods and hurricanes, or war, accidents, or incidents of violence and crime. They can impact us as an individual, a family, or entire communities. In such events, people may lose their homes or their loved ones. They may be separated from their families, or they may be injured physically or emotionally. People may be overwhelmed with the problems they are facing, uncertain and anxious about what will happen next, sad for their losses, or even emotionally numb as they process what has happened. When a crisis occurs, everyone can be affected differently. Just like after a physical injury, providing quick first aid is an important step for recovery and preventing disability. Similarly, after a psychological trauma, swift care and support is very important for healing. Providing the right care and support during a time of suffering can make a big difference. This early support is called a psychological first aid. Everyone can learn how to provide psychological first aid, whether you are a field worker, volunteer, healthcare worker, or friend, or a community member. We can all make a difference. Let's talk about some fundamentals of psychological first aid. Psychological first aid is a humane, supportive response to a fellow human being who is suffering and who may need support. This is composed of providing practical care and support, assessing needs and concerns, listening if people want to talk, comforting if appropriate, and protecting people from further harm. Psychological first aid is not professional counseling, does not require a detailed recounting of the traumatic event, and is not about pressuring people to share their feelings. It is important to recognize that feeling sad, anxious, or overwhelmed is normal during a crisis. Different people may express their emotions in different ways. Some people may have mild reactions, while others can have more severe reactions. Also, the time it takes for people to start recovering may be different, whether it's days, weeks, or months. Importantly, not everyone going through a crisis will need or want support, so do not force help on people who do not want it, but make yourself easily available to those who do. Prior to beginning to offer a psychological first aid, it is important to know what crisis occurred, know the local culture and customs, and know what relevant resources are available for those in need. Provide support in a way that is culturally appropriate and dignified. Some people may only feel comfortable talking alone in privacy or talking to a person of the same gender. Be aware of appropriate cultural expectations. Ask permission before entering into someone's space and before asking any questions, so the person has a feeling of control and they know they can end the conversation whenever they want. And when interacting, use language that a person can understand. Remember that being a caring and attentive listener is often more important than any words you use. Listen first and talk second. Psychological first aid has three core steps. Look, listen, and link. Look. First, check your surroundings to see if the area is safe and see if you are able to have a conversation safely without harm to yourself or others. Also, Take note of people who have immediate physical needs or people who are in acute mental distress. Both of these groups might need more assistance than you are able to give. Know your local partner agencies and emergency service and get help if needed. Listen. Be a good listener. Be patient and calm. Listen with care and empathy. Try not to interrupt or rush the person. Avoid asking details about what happened since narrating their trauma may cause a person more distress. Acknowledge how the person is feeling and what struggles they're going through. You can say, this must be difficult for you, or I can only imagine how this must feel. Do not judge the person's actions or feelings. Do not suggest what they should have done and do not question their actions at the time of crisis. Importantly, do not say that you understand because you truly cannot understand how a person feels but you can listen and show care. Respect their trust and don't share their stories without their permission. Link. Provide people with links for their basic needs, 
such as food or water, shelters or camps, commodities, or places where they can find new work. If they have specific needs, learn what those are and attempt to link them appropriately. Some of your work can also include getting people involved in solving their own problems. This gives a feeling of empowerment. Be honest and optimistic. However, do not give false hopes or wrong information. If you do not know an answer to something, just say, I don't know, or I don't know, but I'll try to find out for you. Encourage people to use positive coping behaviors. Ask them what works for them when they are in stressful situations. It might be resting or regaining their energy. It may be talking to loved ones. It may be praying and engaging in religious rituals. Or it might be getting involved in helping others around them. These positive coping activities can be very helpful. Such positive activities may also prevent the person from unhealthy coping mechanisms, like using drugs, smoking, neglecting self-care, or going into isolation. Some people may just need extra support. This can include children and adolescents who are separated from their caregivers, those with physical or mental health disabilities, pregnant or women with small children, elderly people, and those who are in marginalized groups of society. Try your best to identify relevant resources for these groups. Remember to know your own limitations. You may not be able to provide help to everyone or address every need. Try to find out what other efforts and programs are in place so that you do not feel alone and can get support from others. Be sure to take time for yourself to eat, sleep, recharge, and renew your own energy. Remember to be gentle with yourself. You do not need to have all the solutions. Caring and being involved is a wonderful step in lending a hand during a crisis. The organizations involved in relief work should try their best to care for those who are involved in caring for others. See links to different resources in the description. We can all play a role to help those going through a crisis. Let's put forth our best efforts to make a difference.